Hello, and welcome to The Cube and to this installment of the Persistent Partners series. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer. I'm the Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at The Cube Research. And today, I'm joined by Aon Banerjee, the Chief Strategy and Growth Officer at Persistent Systems, and Palab Deb, who's the Managing Director, SI, Industry GTM Partnerships at Google Cloud. And we're going to have a conversation about the strategic partnership between Persistent Systems and Google Cloud. Gentlemen, welcome. I'm so glad to see you today. Good to see you, Shelley. Well, I'm very much looking forward to this conversation. So, Persistent Systems, Google Cloud, this partnership is a very big deal. Not only does it align with the broader trends in the IT services market, it really nicely positions both companies for future growth. Um, from what I can see, this strategic partnership marks a significant milestone in, in your collective efforts to drive innovation and deliver exceptional value to clients, and that's what everybody wants, right? So I'm so looking forward to delving into the specifics of this partnership with you two, exploring your mutual objectives, the benefits of this strategic partnership, and really learning more about how you envision that it, how it can and will impact your shared clients. So I can't wait to get started. Palab, I'm going to start with you. Will you share with us some details of the strategic partnership agreement, especially how the partnership is structured to enhance collaboration and innovation? Because I think that's what clients are really going to be excited about. Fantastic. Shelly, thanks for having me and a great question to tee off this morning. Um, I'm going to go and uh, do a little bit of a storytelling mode here, but I think it's important to set the perspective. So uh, I joined Google about five years ago, and when I did, we were roughly a $6 billion business in the cloud. And if you looked at our last quarterly earnings, uh, we are today roughly at about 40, 40 billion plus in an annual revenue clip. So that's an amazing story of growth over the last five, five years or so. Yeah. And one of the things that's been integral to this growth journey is that uh, we've been 100% partner focused, partner attached right from the get go. When we got, when we came into this business back in 2019, actually we've been in cloud longer than 2019, but 2019 is when Thomas Kurian joined and, uh, and the cloud orientation took on a whole new meaning altogether. We were significantly subscale compared to our competition both in terms of feet on the ground, in terms of salespeople, partner ecosystem, number of people that would go and be able to deliver on Google Cloud. And one of the early realizations was that we are never going to be able to make up for that, for our late entry, so as to say, by trying to do it all alone. Right. So being partner focused was integral to our growth journey right from the get go. And I'll tell you what, Shelly, it's actually paid dividends. This entire growth journey that I just referred to has been fueled by partners. So zero to 40, or uh, rather six to 40, it's significant acceleration driven by partners. Now, when you stare, uh, stare in the bow of the ship and look forward and look at our journey from 40 to hopefully 100 in a few years, uh, you know, I would say the partner intensity or the partnering motion only gets more intense. Mm -hmm. However, there's a little slight nuances in regards to what sort of partners will matter more or will matter to us as we pivot from 40 to 100. And if you start thinking through that, we and look at the market dynamics, I mean, to the second part of your question, how do customers benefit? What does it mean to customers, et cetera? Right. You start realizing that, okay, the customer buying preferences, buying patterns have changed. Generative AI, in some sense, uh, brought in a whole new meaning to how people consume technology and what it can do for businesses. Cybersecurity has taken on a whole new meaning, especially after everything that we have seen in the last few quarters. And we're realizing that these are important for customers across all segments, not just the biggest and the, and the biggest partners out, customers out there, but across segments, these are common concerns, <laughs> common uh, aspects of buying behavior. And as we look at that change from our demand signal, and we think about how do we look at partners to capitalize and really bring value to that partner, uh, to those yeah. customers. We are looking for more agile uh, partners, more high growth partners, partners that can transcend different customer segments, not just play at the top of the pyramid. And in that regard, we've been very clinical at scanning the thousands of SIs that we work with and literally cherry picking about 10 or so that really bring, number one, scale, right? Number two, complementing that scale, a high degree of nimble and agile attitude, yeah. right, in their approach to market, highly customer focused, and lastly, deep expertise in industries 
and in technology. So when you look at those three aspects, Persistent really stands out as one of those partners that we really want to engage with and build scale with to go after this new set of buying behaviors in the market, which we think will just accelerate uh, quarter over quarter as we look forward to the future. So the strategic partnership agreement is nothing but formalizing that motion by bringing to bear what both parties can bring to the table to capitalize on this opportunity that's here right now and waiting for us to go and make the best of for both our customers and for both our companies. I hope yeah, that I can give you a picture. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. And you know, I, I, what I have seen as an analyst across the tech ecosystem, really in the last five plus years, and even taking into consideration a global pandemic, um, but partnership is really kind of the name of the game. And it is such a smart path to go on in, in working with a, a cadre of trusted vendor partners and really with a view toward how can we not only be agile to your point, but how can we speed um, results for clients and how, you know, I think the mind mindset. We used to have a mindset, I think, in corporate America that we had to do it all ourselves and we couldn't share any of our secrets. And, you know, we certainly couldn't bring, you know, a partner in or somebody who might compete in some way or whatever. And I think what we're seeing is a natural evolution. And some of this is part of the digital transformation journey. But I think you're seeing that. And I think you're seeing this with big companies like Persistent Systems and Google and other major players in the technology space, it's that we're better together. And the whole the bottom line is about serving our customers better, right? And so when we can be better together, everybody wins. So I see a lot of that happening here. Love the tagline, better together. Better I'll together. <laughs> there we go. Aon, talk with us a little bit about the benefits of this partnership. Uh, you know, uh, Paula did a fantastic job, but talk with us a little bit about the benefits of this partnership and the mutual advantages that you see for both Persistent Systems and Google. Yeah, no, I mean, this is a really, really exciting topic. And, um, you know, maybe I'll start from where Palav left off, because if you think about it, the whole better together model, um, you know, we are living in a world that is becoming increasingly heterogeneous and also very open. So, you know, there are many paradoxes that are going on right now in the industry. And if you think about it, our customers have a lot of choices, right? And it is almost impossible for, you know, a company of our size and scale, you know, to be able to solve our customers' problems if we were to try and do it all by ourselves. And one of the mottos that we as a company have is that we like to be seen as, you know, the, um, you know, the orchestrator of choice for our customers. So what that means is whether you're looking for something on the data side or whether you're looking something on the cloud side or whether you're looking at a set of verticalized and horizontal solutions, you know, we try and do this through a combination of us and partners such as Google, right? Now, if you really think about the SPA, the SPA is really a culmination of something that has been in the making for the last decade. And persistent as a company, I don't know how many people know this, but the word persistent comes from persistent in database. So that's something which for the last 30 years from the time we were conceived you know, by our founder, Dr. Deshpande, you know, we've been true to our core. So we are very deep from a data standpoint. And over the years, you know, I mean, the entire data stack is something that we take to our clients and really help them unlock the value of the data that they have, you know, both internally as well as externally. And over the last decade or so, I would say that this data has suddenly started moving from indoors to outdoors to the cloud. And from that vantage point, you know, what we've done is, you know, really developed a core set of competency where we are trying to sew together, you know, how do you drive this data? How do you take it to the cloud? How do you really modernize the overall infrastructure for our clients? and truly help them unlock the full value of their tech investments. Yeah. So from that vantage point, you know, we've obviously been very fortunate to have been partnering with Google Cloud. And you know, whether it is the Google Cloud itself or everything in the platform, starting from you know, the models that you know, Gemini brings in place, Vertex and Looker and so on and so forth, when you start sewing the whole stack together, all of a sudden the power of one plus one equals 11 you know, becomes a reality. <laughs> and that, that is something where, you know, we are saying that, look, I mean, this strategic partnership agreement that we are now embarking on, you know, it's a multi-year partnership. This will really start taking the impact that we take to our clients to a different level altogether. You know, we start getting access to technology much before the technology is commercially available. So which right. means that, you know, we are taking our clients much ahead from a go-to-market standpoint. You know, from a time-to-market standpoint, we are helping them, you know, beat their competition. 
You know, we are trying to help them optimize their spends. We are trying to help, you know, take legacy brick and mortar companies. And they are all, you know, on this accelerated path from a digital transformation standpoint. We are helping accelerate those journeys. If you're working about, you know, if you're talking about our digital native clients, then obviously we come in and really help them at the core from the product engineering standpoint, you know, from a custom software development standpoint and really take those workloads to the cloud. So in my mind, you know, this is really, you know, kind of the next frontier of the relationship between our firms. And, you know, we are just about starting to scratch the surface in terms of what's possible between you know, our two companies, you know, going to our clients and really changing the nature of, you know, how they look at their overall tech investments. I mean, it's not a difficult sale for sure, but yeah. look, again, I started off by saying that customers have an abundance of choices. Yeah, they do. So we, yeah. And so we have to lead with, you know, impact at the center of every discussion and every narrative that we have. Yeah. And this ability to actually join forces and go to our clients with the narrative, with the right amount of conviction behind that narrative, you know, right. with a clear, you know, the burden of proof is on, on us, yeah. you know, and if you think about it from a Genii standpoint, we are rapidly approaching the second year anniversary and clients are now, I would say in the last couple of quarters, starting to get from POCs and they're starting to talk about, you know, how do you really take these Genii based POCs to production yes. and how do this start altering the enterprise level SLAs and KPIs that these companies have? So I think so the value that this provides to our enterprise clients at the end of the day is going way beyond the traditional IT landscape and is starting to really get into the core of the businesses of the clients that we serve. So yes, on the one hand, while it seems like a no-brainer, because you know gone are the days where clients were thinking about, hey, should we adopt or not? It's becoming a race to saying that, can I really beat my competition in terms of getting the best of suite you know, in and in terms of driving yeah. those improvements in business transformation. Yeah. yeah, and I think you're right. We're beyond the, we're getting to the, beyond the should I adopt and it's heck yes, I'm adopting. How can I do this in a way that makes the most sense for our organization and how can we get to, how can we speed time to value? You know, and I think that's a little bit of a part of this value prop that I see as well. Um one of the things I would love if you would walk us through some some examples of some of the potential services and solutions that will be available. Yeah, right. Do you want to go for it. Go yeah, for so, it. I'll, I'll yeah, chime so, in. Sure. Let, let me just tee it off, and then you know, um, and Palab and I we've been talking about this for close to the last one year right now. <laughs> and if you think about the clients that we serve, look, I mean, we are centered. You know, we we don't spread ourselves thin, so we are centered around three primary you know industry verticals. Mm -hmm. um, so banking, financial services, and insurance is one of them. Healthcare, life sciences is the second one. And then all things high tech, comms, media, telecom. That's the third one. Okay. So what we are doing right now is we're really trying to say that, you know, how do we really take our combined assets to our clients and, you know, really help them, whether it's a set of horizontal solutions or whether it's a set of uh, vertical solutions. Uh, pick life sciences as an example, you know, and I'm just taking this on the fly, right? Uh, from a life sciences standpoint, I mean, we are all coming out of COVID. I mean, if you were to just think about the world that we lived in three years back and the world that we live in today, how fortunate are we, right? And I mean, we are, we are all talking right now with the smiles on our face, thanks to the vaccines and the pace that we, these vaccines came out. Today, if you look at, you know, drug development, if you look at everything from discovering a molecule, you know, to developing that molecule into a commercial drug, I mean... The cycle used to be 10 to 13 years. And now we're starting to talk about a cycle which is really shrinking dramatically, right? It is not limited to the vaccines. It's limited to many rare disorders. It's limited to, yeah. uh, or rather I should say that, you know, you talk about oncology, you talk about diabetes, you talk about cardiovascular issues. I mean, it's all at the end of the day, looking at data coming from the patient community, the hospital community, the insurance community, the labs, you know, the radiology community. How do you take all of this and start making seemingly, you know, insightful sense out of this and then help shrink this entire life cycle to be able to tackle a problem which is plaguing our planet, right? And this is where, you know, we go to many of our life sciences client and we are actually helping them shrink these life cycles through the power of generative AI, AI and the machine learning, through the power of core data analytics and driving insights on the back of that analytics. 
And similarly, if you were to take this example to a bank, if you were to take this example to a telco, you know, there are a plethora of such examples where we are, you know, partnering, where we are holding hands and saying that how can you really help them reimagine their businesses to be able to solve foundational problems that they have had, you know, over the last several decades. So super exciting times, if you ask me personally, yeah. we are just starting to see green shoots of this and in very meaningful ways. And uh, it's all about, this partnership is all about going to start looking at some of these high propensity business transformation use cases and making them real for our common clients. So, Paula, talk a little bit, if you would, on the heels of this from Aon, about what about delivery and support for cloud-based systems? How will this alliance enhance that? Uh, see, the way this, the way we see it is, look, the, you know, partnering, like you, you started off in the beginning, has been around. This is a no-brainer. But there's something fundamentally different at this stage. And this ties into your question as to how is delivery going to become important, right? The yeah. fundamental difference is, look, it's no longer a partnering for simplicity of buying, called reducing the complexity of buying, which is very early on partnering. It is neither keeping the lights on, which was, you know, something that we saw in the early part of the decade. And this is truly about uh, saying that, okay, can you use that technology to really help me transform my business in a very secure way? And transformation, at the end of the day, Shelley, I think we all get it. It's not about better workflows. It's about better insights and better decision making that helps you yeah. step, keep a step ahead of your competitors. And that's where Google comes in. I mean, we've been using data and AI for so long in all our products and all of us, and there are about nine products of Google that have a billion users each, consumer users, and all of us probably touch them in one way or the other and experience the benefits of how getting from point A to point B has become easier with AI coming in or how transcribing, writing an email has become easier, right? Now, to bring that experience into the corporate world, into the enterprise world, easier said than done, because there are legacy systems to contend with, there are data silos to contend with, and uh, while technology can solve many of these, it does need a deep understanding of that business, of the journey from getting from that siloed mess to this utopian world of seamless uh, experience like what we experience in the consumer world. And in that regard, uh, you know, technical acumen is important, but it's also important to use the best tools that are out there, uh, get the advisory from the best experts that are out there. And what Google has done is it is deliberately focused on building out what we call a de delivery enablement portfolio with a lot of muscle around it. And let me explain what that means. Literally, a successful delivery at a client doesn't start on the day you sign the contract. It honestly starts perhaps six to nine months before that, which means six to nine months before that, we engage with our partners to make sure they have the right pool of talented people so they can deploy those people in the right people, in the right place. So which means making sure that you have the easiest way to access our training, get to our certification, go to our boot camps and all of that stuff. Now, at the point of signing the contract, when you're ready to start delivery, there's also another set of intervention that comes in. We will sit down and offer with our partners and our clients uh, joint boot camps, sometimes at no cost to the customer or the client. Right. We bring in run books that PSO has developed. Uh, PSO is Professional Services Org, which is a very small org within Google. But what it does is it harnesses the knowledge of all the deliveries that are happening in Google Cloud literally across the world. And so we harness that knowledge and bring create cookbooks or run books that are made available to the partner team so that they are productive right from day one, right? So the run books, the boot camps, getting the right people in the place gets you off to a good start. But as any of us who've been in delivery know, surprises will happen. There's no two ways about it. It is bound to happen at some point of time or the other. And the question is, how can you help that partner at that point when a surprise happens? Uh, and that's where we bring together partner success services, which is really where our professional services organization spends bulk of its time. So what it does is it makes itself available to be proactively injected into complex delivery engagements so we can come and advise the partner and the customer on the architecture, on the roadmap, on certain technical nuances so that the delivery is really successful and we try and avoid those surprises. The good news is a lot of this stuff really doesn't come at a high price point or at any, any price point for uh, for partners and customers. This is Google injecting itself 
with its partners to make sure delivery is successful. And today, in the world of Gen AI, where technology is changing so fast, in the world where security is the number one concern, being able to bring the best of Google and our experiences of delivering these complex programs across the world and making it available at each point of inter, uh, each point of truth, let's say, is really what uh, where we spend a lot of time and effort on. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And and really, I mean, it's been obvious. Uh, obviously, I've been tracking Google Cloud for the last decade and watching that growth. And, you know, it's been clear that there's been a, gro- a goal of aggressively growing that cloud business and expanding par- partner ecosystem. We see that on a regular basis. And then, you know, that sales delivery joint solution development focus, it's all very obvious. And I think it's working for you. It's working. It's I would say it's working. Partners seem to be, uh, you know, they, it resonates with partners. Yeah. They see that this is truly partner-focused company. We actually have a mandate internally that 100% of our engagements have to have a partner on them. And it's like it. uh, kind of governed right at the top. So there's a high focus on partnerships and not just partnerships for the sake of a checkbox. Our field teams realize that, hey, we are built uh, internally within Google, we are subscale in our ability to deliver. We need partners yeah. to deliver. Yeah. People yeah. realize that Google isn't typically the destination for just lift and shift. People come to Google for transforming their businesses, which means yeah. you have to start with an innate understanding of the business on day zero, and you have to start with a good technical background so you can bring the bring value quickly. Like we said, accelerated time to value. Right. And so that means that we engage early. So we don't engage after a deal is closed or after, or after a contract is signed. We try to bring in early. And this strategic partnership agreement really brings more intentionality and muscle around this whole process. It's like saying, hey, Persistent and Google, let's look at where we are headed for the next three years. Look at which accounts we want to target, which solutions we want to take to market, which markets do we want to penetrate, and bring that early engagement into every facet of our motion. Well, it's early engagement and strategy. You know, that's obvious that it's really a strategic focus that's infusing everything that you're doing. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So Aon, I mean, persistent partnering with Google, as I mentioned earlier, is not a new thing. This is something like a 10 plus year collaboration. I'd love it if you would walk me through from your point of view, you know, some highlights of that collaboration and, you know, maybe talk a little bit about the role that your ecosystem, your partner ecosystem at Persistent plays here? Uh, Absolutely. Very happy to do that. Um, Look, I think so the hallmark of this partnership has been that, you know, uh, we've been really keeping the client at the center of everything. And we've been constantly engaging with, you know, the tech disruption that the industry is looking at and saying that how do you take advantage of the tech disruption to the value of our clients. And to that extent, you know, we've gone to the, you know, we've gone to the extent of building out centers of excellence across cloud. We've gone to the extent of building out, you know, data and AI and ML based, you know, centers of excellence. We've even gone to the extent of making acquisitions of companies who were, you know, very focused on the Google cloud ecosystem Right. And essentially what we did is, you know, when you look at choice points that are available to larger companies like us, once you acquire an organization, is you integrate them, you know, to an existing setup. I think so what we've done is, you know, we've, you know, actually acquired a company, we got that in, which was a 100% Google Cloud focused company. And we made that the epicenter of all things Google Cloud within Persistent. So all of a sudden, rather than having four or five different businesses that were all tailoring towards this bigger, broader tech stack, including Google Cloud, you know, being scattered across persistent, we took all of that, put it into one BU, and that BU has been the one that's been really championing everything for us in persistent. And I think that's been one of the core reasons why we stayed very focused in terms of building on this partnership. And what was earlier, you know, more of a, here are two, three, four areas that we deal with. I think so now the nature of this partnership is much more expansive. You know, it is cutting across all the verticals that we are playing in. Yeah. It is no longer dominated by one or two countries, but it is now a global partnership. So everything from countries in Australia, New Zealand to, you know, to Asia, to the massively, you know, thriving startup ecosystem in India, 
to Europe, to North America, you know, this partnership basically spreads its wings across all these places. So if you personally ask me, you know, what happens now that we have this strategic partnership agreement with Google, you know, all we are saying is that, you know, continue to do the work that we've done for our clients in a handful of these geographies, but then take it, rinse and replicate that, continue to play ahead of the curve, continue to have an early access to the technology that's coming up from Google Cloud, you know, take it to our clients and help them solve some of the most complex problems that they are dealing with today. I love it. So and I don't... Really I, I, I'm sorry? Sorry, go ahead. Please go ahead. No, well, my next question was just really going to be, you know, I, I'm... Persistent is not an unknown company, um, but I would love for you to just hit on quickly and, you know, talk with us a little bit about Persistent's reputation in the public cloud space and, and your delivery expertise chops. I think that plays kind of a significant role here. Yeah. So, look, I mean, there are two sets of folks, you know, in the industry who look at you as a service provider and determine, you know, where do you lie in that continuum in yeah. terms of your maturity levels, right? One are, of course, our clients in terms of the trust that they bestow upon the service provider. And the second is, of course, the analyst community. And if you look at it, let me just pick on the analyst community for a moment. So if you look at the analyst community, a few years back, you know, we were just about a small dot in the cloud transformation space. But if you look at the strides that we've been making now on the back of all the work we are doing, you know, from cloud transformation standpoint, and when I say cloud transformation, I mean public cloud transformation, you know, we've actually become a very strong, credible challenger yeah. where, you know, we are fortunate to have now, you know, been ahead of some of our much larger tier one peers. Now, this wouldn't have happened by just us going and, you know, spreading collateral in the market. It's coming on the back of peer reviews. So which means, you know, when the analyst is looking at publishing their, you know, overall, um, you know, their overall, let me call it the magic quadrant right now, you know, the magic quadrant is essentially getting feedback from our clients. The clients are coming in and saying that, you know, here's a partner which is agile, nimble, small enough to really care, large enough to scale, and getting into the weeds of how do we really drive our cloud transformation journey, you know, plan that out, implement that, and then run it. And we yeah. do this again and again across all the industry vertical that we are playing in. So look, we are a small player, but having said that, we've also been growing dramatically. Just a few numbers for our audience. I think so our revenue has been growing about 25% CAGR for the last five years in an industry that has been through COVID, in an industry where growth rates were negative, and we've been consistently growing. This is all on the back of the client trust that we've been earning. If you look at the values from a valuation perspective and a shareholder return standpoint, again, that's, uh, you know, it's more than a triple digit growth from a shareholder return perspective over the last five years time. So I would say that, look, I mean, we are, for the clients that we work with, we are a very trusted partner, you know, and they trust us on some of their most complex problems. And obviously, as we continue to grow, you know, we'll continue to bank on this partnership in terms of really helping us get into bigger, broader problems, problems which are longer term in terms of, you know, the um, longer term in terms of requiring to solve them. And, you know, I can only say that, you know, we are operating in a very complex and a reasonably challenging macro industry uh, and, and the overall economics are also rather challenging. But we continue to be fairly bullish on the back of the client deliveries that we are, you know, driving. And these partnerships, you know, I mean, the partnership with Google, which is as expensive as it is, you know, will certainly play a very large role in terms of continuing this growth trajectory. Yeah. Well, and you know what it all boils down to? Happy clients. I mean, Absolutely. when you deliver in a way that makes your clients happy, helps them be more successful, more profitable, grow at the speed that they want. I mean, that's really the magic. And so that's that's great to be a part of. So as we wrap this conversation, let's explore for a moment some of the broader IT services market trends. Palab, what are you seeing out there in terms of, I mean, I think we touched on this just a, a few minutes ago, but buyer behavior is changing, buyer demand is changing. How are the market dynamics shifting? Yeah, I think there's, like you said, very pronounced change in the what customers are looking for 
And so that we will not repeat that. So I think what that is doing is it's putting on, uh, you know, it's challenging us as a technology provider to be at the leading edge of making sure our technology is getting out there in a secure way. Secure, I amplify security so much uh, uh, over and over again because we're really hearing from our customers, right? Yeah. That they are worried about, uh, hey, is the is their data is their data leakage happening? Uh, are, are is there an ability for them to convince their suppliers and customers that they can operate in a secure environment when they go to the cloud? And those things have become front and center, right? So if you really look at what the what the how buying behaviors are changing and what the imperatives are thereof right. for everybody in the CPU system, us as a hyperscaler, our uh, our SI partners or our ISV partners, it's all about making sure that the best of technologies in, is is being brought to customers uh, in a very secure way, in a way where the customers do have control of how they use that technology. Uh, they have the ability to you know initiate something stop something or restart something at their at their at their will and at their desire and then they have from a from a viewpoint of a si partner ecosystem looking for people that can not just manage the technical complexity of what's what's on the table but actually operate it almost like a managed service that's becoming a very important part and where we are seeing this is people are actually constructing uh, let's say deals or contracts where they are just not taking care of the technology estate, but they are taking care of the outcome that the business process is driving, underpinned by the technology estate. So, especially let's say with generative AI, um, just let's throw an example with insurance as an example. It's not just about bringing in the technology to for supporting your claims or your underwriting, but actually taking on a goal of saying how you can make that process more efficient or reduce leakage and taking that as an outcome in your contract itself. And that means a really, really deep partnership and a really deep ability to understand technology and business process and manage that complexity for that customer as a whole. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. And I also add, maybe if I could just add something to what Palab said. Of course. Uh, you know, the other thing is that uh, what we're seeing is now non-CIO functions are also starting to play a very active role. Yeah. in the decision-making life cycle, right? Because it is all stemming from a business problem that they are trying to solve. The CIO is obviously facilitating the solve of that problem. So if you look at us, you know, I mean, as a service provider, you know, our conversations are now going way beyond just tech. Our conversations are starting at business and then getting down to the tech stack and then getting down to the implementation of that tech stack. I would say that's another very clear shift that we are seeing. So while the CIO and the CTO organization continues to be, you know, integral to all of this, but on the demand side, you're starting to see multiple buying personas that are coming into the picture. Yeah. And that is also helping us get much more expansive on the one hand and sharper on the other in terms of truly solving that enterprise level problem. Well, I came into this conversation knowing that it was going to be fantastic. You gentlemen did not disappoint. It's clear that the strategic partnership between Persistent Systems and Google Cloud is exactly the kind of innovative collaboration that the market needs today to meet the evolving demands of the IT services market. And, and I see this, you know, this combination, this combination of resources and expertise between persistent systems and Google really, really serves to position you so well to, de to deliver for clients. And I think, you know, we've talked about this, you know, fostering innovation, driving growth, um, really helping clients be more competitive. All of this, I think, is an important part of the equation. And I think what customers are looking for is, you know, help navigating this rapidly changing landscape of enterprise IT services. So I love this collaboration. I think that it's it's solving for many, many customers. And I think that there are great things ahead for both of you. Um, Aon Banerjee, Chief Strategy and Growth Officer at Persistent Systems, Palab Deb, Managing Director, SI and Industry Go-to-Market Partnerships at Google Cloud. You've been amazing. Thank you so much for joining me today, for sharing news of this collaboration between your companies. And I am guessing there will be good things ahead for both of you and for your customers as a result. And to our audience, thank you for joining us here at theCUBE, your source for enterprise and emerging tech news. I'm Shelley Kramer, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.